My name is Dimitri Psaltis. Uh, I'm at uh, uh, a place in Switzerland in Lausanne, the Cor Polytechnique Federal de Lausanne, or EPFL, where I have my lab uh, doing the work in optics. I'm a professor there and have a lab working in optics. Okay, Optofluidic is something we started about five, six years ago uh, in a paper wrote together with uh, Steve Quake and Chang Wei Yang in Nature, uh, where we suggested that combining microfluidic devices, devices that were developed to have uh, micro plumbing, small fluidic channels, primarily as micro reactors for chemistry and biology, combine that technology with optics and build devices uh, which uh, are more than the sum of the two, which allow, but the combination allows you to do things for optics and fluidics that you couldn't do uh, otherwise. Solar energy is a as you know, a, a big topic these days, a way to harness energy uh, that is clean and uh, relatively easy to, to access. Uh, a lot of the focus is on photovoltaics. How do you go directly from uh, light to electricity? Uh, there's another uh, sector of uh, solar energy, which is uh, uh, solar fuels. There the goal is to start with uh, a bad fuel, a fuel that normally you would not be able to use, like water, and then uh, get a fuel that you can burn and, and use for energy, like hydrogen. So splitting water would be an example. Uh, photosynthesis does this, starts with uh, 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 water, uh, water and carbon dioxide, and then ends up with sugars as the output fuel that it can use and burn. Uh, so a solar fuel reactor is something that has fluid in it, liquids usually, as the, as the input fluid. Fluid is the output, the, by the end product is usually a fluid as well, and light comes in and catalyzes or makes the reaction from bad fuel to good fuel. Uh, so then the uh, optofluidics comes in as a way where using microfluidic te technology, micro reactors uh, in place of big chemical reactors, uh, to design simultaneously the optical system and the fluidics and the chemistry of the, of the system at the small scale, the micron scale, and get advantages out of that. The promise of optofluidics is, is, uh, comes about from the fact that if you have small channels, small reactors, uh, rather than large ones, this allows you to A, guide the light at the right place where you need it, to focus it through plasmonics, lenses, uh, evanescent waves, different ways to focus light at the right place throughout the volume of the reactor and at the same time guide the reactants, the chemicals which are involved. Uh, so you have typically the fuel you would like to convert to a, a higher grade fuel, have to meet a catalyst, another chemical, and this, if it happens in a small area, then you have a lot of surface area compared to the volume in which these chemicals uh, live. So this large ratio of, uh, of area to volume uh, allows you to, uh, to speed up the reaction rate uh, at the same time, there's challenges because now you have small channels through which these fluids can need to flow through, which means you could have clogging, you could have fouling, it means the, the, the system gets uh, dirty and, uh, and it changes its, its uh, character and so forth. But the promise is there. The promise is there by being able to design at the small scale both the optics and the uh, fluidics and the chemistry of, of the system, of the reactor, uh, uh, you can speed things up quite a bit. A lot of people have uh, talked about artificial photosynthesis uh, and it's just starting where people are trying to uh, uh, duplicate this on microfluidic platforms. Uh, papers are coming out uh, I, I think in the last couple of years at the fast pace uh, where people are uh, designing these photocatalysts, the uh, fluidics at the micro scale and starting to get numbers in terms of conversion efficiencies and, and so forth. Uh, so once that phase is over, where, where the basic demonstrations are done, then the scale-up will be the big challenge. Because in the end, you still need to collect light from a large area to have enough electricity produced, which means you will need to have panels of these microfluidic uh, devices, or it's optofluidic devices, generating fuel and uh, uh, this scale-up would be possible, it would be, it would be a challenge to do it at low cost and, uh, and efficiently.
The nice thing about solar fuels as opposed to, let's say, photovoltaics is that uh, just like in plants, the end result is a fuel that you can store. In plants, it's sugar that are normally stored in the roots. So that's why potatoes are full of sugar, because that's the battery of the, uh, uh, of the plant. That's where the energy from the sun and the CO2 gets stored as carbohydrates. Uh, the same thing for solar fuels. The end result is either hydrogen that you can store as compressed air, as compressed uh, uh, hydrogen, or, uh, uh, or some other liquid uh, fuel that, that you can store and burn in your car or burn. So uh, in, in that respect, it's, uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, alternative or an interesting way to go.